In treating the system H2+, plus, we have uh, chosen to express its wave function as a linear combination of atomic orbitals, which are represented by phi A and phi B. So this is an LCAO, and I'll go ahead and call it an MO, a molecular orbital. And when we want to uh, determine what energies this implies, we need to calculate the energy expectation value, which is written formally here. And here we've actually filled in what the value of the uh, denominator, which is the overlap integral, uh, turns out to be. What we want to do now is to evaluate the numerator, this part where we have the Hamiltonian operating on this function. Now, the first thing I want to do is uh, basically show what terms we have to include with that. So if I have psi plus or minus h psi, okay, we're going to have terms that look like this. We'll have phi a plus phi b, plus or minus, I should say, h phi a plus or minus phi b. All right, so we're going to end up with four different terms with different combinations of phi A and phi B on either side of the Hamiltonian. So we'll have, for example, phi A, Hamiltonian, phi A. We'll have plus or minus from this plus or minus sign here. Phi A, Hamiltonian, phi B. We'll have plus or minus phi B, Hamiltonian, phi A. And then with two plus or minuses, we'll end up with a plus phi b, Hamiltonian phi b. All right, so these are the four different uh, integrals that we ideally would have to calculate. But I want to point out that it's not as difficult as all of that, because when we have real functions here, and the Hamiltonian is a Hermitian operator, it means that this term and this term effectively are going to give us the same result. And this term and this term may only give us different results if phi A and phi B represent different uh, atomic orbitals. We'll go ahead and leave them different for now, uh, but we'll uh, ultimately come back to a point where we're treating them both, for example, as 1s orbitals. All right, so how would we calculate something like this? All right, now what we need to do is fill in what is the form of the Hamiltonian. So let's first evaluate what the Hamiltonian operating on phi A might be. Well, remember the Hamiltonian is minus a half del squared minus 1 over Ra minus 1 over Rb plus 1 over R. So all of this will be operating on the state phi A. Now this part here would just be the same as for, you know the Hamiltonian for that given atom. All right, in this case, a hydrogen atom. And since I've used the Hamiltonian here specifically for hydrogen, I guess we're really talking about H2+. Um, but this should, when operating on this, give me the eigenvalue that corresponds to this state, this atomic orbital. So this part of it operating on that is just going to give me that energy times that. But then I have this piece over here. And this piece... Um, I'll need to treat a little bit more carefully or differently than this piece. So I get a, a, a fairly solid and easy to res obtain result from this, um, but I need to figure out what this is going to give me. Well, there's a couple of different uh, closures. When I evaluate Hamiltonian on phi A, I'm doing that also over here, but you'll notice that I have two different functions here. Here I'm closing it with phi A, and here I'm closing it with phi B. So let's evaluate what we, each of those give us. When I close it with phi A, so in other words, when I'm evaluating this particular uh, number, um, I'm going to have phi A operating on this, which is just going to give me EA times the inner product of phi A with itself, which since it's normalized, this is just going to be 1. And then I'm going to have phi A with this other set of variables, phi A. Okay, now remember we're treating R as though it's constant. The two protons are not moving relative to one another. So I'm going to get one term that's just going to be this constant times, again, the inner product of phi A and phi A. So in fact, I can pull that out and just write E O e uh, sub a plus 1 over r plus this other thing phi a times
times negative 1 over rb phi a. Well, it's useful to figure out what on earth is this thing. Well, first of all, we can write it out as an integral. And if I do that, what I'm going to have is uh, essentially this function phi a of the, uh, which is a function of the electronic coordinate squared divided by its distance from the uh, its distance from the other proton. Okay, well, this is representing, if you will, some sort of Coulomb interaction between a proton that's in an orbital on one of the atoms with the proton that represents the nucleus of the other atom. All right, for this reason, we tend to relate this and we, and we loop it together with this and uh, define a new um, quantity, which I'll call j, and I'm going to call it j sub a because we're dealing with the particular orbital that is on the a atom, as 1 over r plus this integral, where we're evaluating, in essence, the Coulomb uh, interaction between the electron in orbital a with the proton that belongs to atom B. So this Coulomb interaction is what we now call a Coulomb integral that we need to evaluate. All right, so this is going to be a key quantity in our evaluation. Now I should point out that if I were similarly evaluating this kind of quantity but for the other orbital, so in other words, if I were trying to evaluate phi B phi b, this sort of thing, I would get the energy corresponding to that orbital. Instead of e sub a, I'll get e sub b plus 1 over r plus an integral that looks like this, phi b negative 1 over r a, because that would be the one in this overall Hamiltonian that I wouldn't be using to create e sub b. Phi b. So in this case, if I define this together as j sub b, then I have a, the second definition for a Coulomb integral that is related to the particular atomic orbital on atom b. And there should be a minus sign in both of these. So this definition and this definition are both Coulomb integrals. I've used a subscript to, indent, to identify the particular orbital that's used. If it were the same orbital on each atom, then uh, we wouldn't need a specific uh, subscript to indicate that. All right, so this is part of what we need to do. But there is another piece, and that is I have specifically looked at elements where I've got the same orbital on either side of the Hamiltonian. What if I have a different orbital on the other side of the Hamiltonian? So, in other words, instead of closing this one, instead of closing this with phi sub a, what if I closed it with phi sub b? So I'd have phi b h phi a. So I need to take this result now and left multiply by phi b. So this would give me e sub a times the inner product of phi b, phi a, which should look familiar. This is just the overlap integral. Then I'll have phi b minus 1 over rb, phi a. And I'll also have 1 over r, phi b, phi a, which of course is also the overlap integral. Okay. In this, I'm going to end up with a result that looks like this. I'll have the overlap integral times the energy of Ea, okay, plus the overlap integral over the internuclear distance, r. And I'll have another term here, which I haven't defined as anything yet. And how would we analyze this? Well, we've got uh, essentially an 
electron that could be in either phi A or phi B. So the electron is exchanging itself between the two protons, and we're concerned about its Coulomb interaction with the, um, with the nucleus uh, represented by proton B. All right, this has no classical analog. This is a purely quantum term. All right, and as a result, we have a, a definition that we give this. We call this K, and we're going to lump together this term with it, so it's equal to S over R plus this integral phi B minus 1 over R B phi A. And this is something we're going to call the exchange integral. And as I said, this is a purely quantum mechanical term. It, doesn't, it would not arise in any sort of classical treatment uh, of this uh, atom or of this molecular system. So uh, it is something that uh, is uh, going to be interesting for us to follow to see what, it, what implications it has for the energy of this system. Now let me go ahead and uh, write out um, the results that we have for all of this. So the quantity that we're trying to calculate is for our linear combination of atomic orbitals, this particular integral. And it turns out if we put together all of our math correctly, we would end up with an expression that looks something like this. For the first case, when we were operating the H on phi, the phi sub A part here, we would have an E sub A times 1 plus or minus S plus the Coulomb integral for the A part, plus or minus the exchange integral for that part. Okay, for the, if we operated this on phi sub B and then closed it, we would end up with a term that would be E sub B times 1 plus or minus S plus JB plus or minus the exchange integral, K. Now, in this particular thing, I've treated the two, phi sub A and phi sub B, as different. But what if they were both equal to the 1s orbital? Well, that would mean then that E sub A and E sub B are both equal to the energy of the 1s orbital, which in atomic units would simply be minus 1 half. I won't worry about the value of that. I'll just write this as E sub 1s. But in other words, these things will be the same. These things will be the same, and I'll just call those both equal to j. And my final result here is going to be that this expectation value of the Hamiltonian over psi plus or minus is going to be 2 times E sub 1s times 1 plus or minus s plus 2 times j plus or minus k. So the Coulomb and the exchange integrals uh, come in uh, as critical components of this expectation value, and this will be useful when we want to ultimately define the energies for the molecular orbital, which we have called E sub plus or minus.